Excuse me, did you say something? Hello everyone, Alec here, and today I want to talk about recently posted Tamriel Rebuilds teaser for an upcoming update. According to the post from their website, this will be their most ambitious, largest and content-rich update so far. And these words coming from Tamriel Rebuild team, that means something. So I read their full post, analyzed all the new screenshots and it got me so excited that I had to sit down and share some thoughts and comments with you guys. I honestly feel that this expansion will bring Tamriel Rebuild to new heights. I could be just super hyped right now, but I really do feel something very special coming our way. I'm listening. Go ahead. So on February 6th, Tamriel Rebuild announced a new massive update called Grasping Fortune. It will expand the map further south and it's centered around the city of Narsis. And yes, we are finally visiting Hlaul capital and the second largest city in all of Morrowind, second only to Almalexia, the capital of Morrowind. Which is kinda crazy if you think about it. Narsis will be larger than Old Ebonheart and that's something I honestly didn't expect. Judging from the teaser, it looks like developers are transferring some of the imperial power and influence from Old Ebonheart to Narsis as well. And this decision is actually based on lore, which means that coming update will again slightly affect Old Ebonheart. Some things like political power will be, as I said, moved to Narsis and mainly through dialogues, and there will be some additions to Old Ebonheart as well. The one I'm really looking forward to is the melee tournament. We will be able to watch characters fighting each other or join them as well. I'm all for this kind of entertainment and Old Ebonheart seems like a perfect setting for that classic knightly tournament. And people who already play Tamriel Rebuilt will know that there was a Breton knight wandering the streets of Old Ebonheart, speaking of a possible tournament, so finally we're gonna actually have it in game. And we may see more of this memorable character. It's not 100% confirmed for this update because it requires a lot of scripting. But still, it's great to know that it's on the way. And Old Ebonheart's East Empire Company questline is also getting overhauled, so there will be plenty of new reasons to revisit this epic city, which was already slightly overhauled in previous update and looks better than ever. Also, while much of the imperial political power is moving to Narsis and Almalexia, I should say that Imperial Legion's headquarters remain in Old Ebonheart. Now let's talk about the new map and what can we expect to find there. Firstly, I believe that the House Hlalu storyline is slowly getting its final piece of the puzzle, as I don't think that there is much of their territory left unexplored. I might be wrong, I'm not that good with the overall political situation and geography, but it looks to me that we are very near House Redren territory further northwest. And it feels nice having another Great House chapter finalized. So far, we only had House Talvani completed in the Sacred East. Now, is this all we're gonna see in regards to House Hlalu or Talvani? I don't think so. As Tamriel Rebuilt one day finalizes the entire map of Morrowind, we may see some of the bigger overarching quest lines, ones that are left for the end game, house wars and things like that. In essence, I think that each great house and especially highly political and ambitious Hlalu has its long-term plan for domination over entire Morrowind. I believe that Hlalu specifically plans on targeting rich Indoril territories, but we might have to wait for that. And speaking of House Hlalu, in vanilla game they were my first great house of choice simply because they were conveniently placed in Balmora. Over time I gravitate towards the Radaran, but I have to admit Tamriel Rebuild rekindled my interest in Hlalu. On the mainland we got to explore Andotren, a major Hlalu center and a city I fell in love with. Andotren was like Balmora on steroids and looks like Narcissus will, in return, be Andotren on steroids. And not to mention all the amazing scenery throughout these regions. Some of my favorite landscapes were alongside River Tyr, shared with House Inderil. And now we go further south as Narcissus is found on the upper tier in the barren Shipal Shin region. I hope I pronounced it right. As you guys can see, map is nearly touching the southern border with Argonia or Black Marsh and to the west it goes all the way to Cyrodiil. Alright so now let's talk about Narsis for a moment. The fact that it's going to be the second largest city in entire Morrowind, as well as the most cosmopolitan and wealthiest hub, it means that it will be absolutely packed with content. And from what I understand, this is one of the main reasons why it took so long to release this map. I mean the quest writing alone probably took ages. 
and also people afraid of low frame rate, considering the size of the city and experience with previous large urban areas like Old Ebonheart, shouldn't worry as team explained that they've found a way of working around it by smarter urban planning. So let's just hope it works. Anarsis will be comprised of six districts. Market Corridor will include the Grand Bazaar, one of the wonders of the East, with its many lights and merchants from all corners of Tamriel. It has multiple levels, secret black market operated by Kamala Tong, and a chance to find all kinds of rare exotic items. Another one is St. Velot's Corridor, home to working class population, Kamala Tong Hall, many small time guilds and tower apartments owned by rivaling local gangs. It sounds like it's going to be a very fun but dangerous place to visit. These are classical slums, home of the poor, petty thieves, where basically everyone and everything is corrupted. Waterfront, the next district, will include headquarters of Kamala Tong, who seem to be working pretty close to House Halal. And between you and me, Kamala Tong is a much cooler guild of assassins than Dark Brotherhood. And finally, Waterfront is also home to the East Empire Company headquarter. Foreign Quarter is another district, and this one looks like it's going to be the absolute blast. First of all, Fighters Guild main headquarters for all of Morrowind are found here. And as one of my favorite factions, I expect a lot of old-fashioned questing fun here. From killing rats to dealing with eternal faction politics. And whereas Fighters Guild, there's also Mages Guild. As well as main Imperial Temple for some major divine worship. So as some of you probably figured it out, similarly to Vivek's foreign quarter, this one was at one point reserved only to foreigners. Therefore many imperial western guilds are expected to be found here. And there's a whole ton of them, which just makes the world more believable and complex. I mean, in older times pretty much every profession had its guild. And in Narcissus, which is all about business and profit, obviously there is a large focus on guilds, both western and Dunmer. However, that's not all. You see, beneath the foreign quarter, or more like the entire city, are the catacombs. They extend deep beneath Narcissus in a twisting maze of tombs, burial passages and shrines. Now, upper reaches are maintained by Clan Hlalu, but its lowest reaches are abandoned, inhabited by all manners of spirits and demons. And in order to keep them away from pilgrims or coming too close to the surface, House Hlalu often employs warriors capable and brave enough to keep them away. And as if that's not enough, there's a unique and very extensive sewer system with almost half of it being haunted by all kinds of undead. And if you delve deeper into Narcissus lore, there's an actual reason why it's all haunted. It's explained in the game, so it won't be just a randomly haunted underground for no particular reason. But what all of this means is that besides having a large epic city on the top, there are miles of deep underground dungeon diving. It also reminds me a bit of Mournhold from Tribunal DLC, which also has a large network of catacombs and ruins underneath. I expect a bunch of weird encounters, unique mini-bosses, items and similar things. Moving on, we have a council quarter. This is a center of Hlaw government and home to some of the most important people in entire Morrowind. It comes with the academy, where we can learn all about Hlalu and how to make business. There's also a measure hall, which looks insane and is basically the seat of Hlalu power. Measure hall, from what I understand, basically serves to display or show off all the glory and immense wealth of House Hlalu. So it has to be all over the top, a place where that Dunmer saying, wealth beyond measure, becomes reality. And the Council Quarter is also home to Imperial Consulate, residence and office of the Imperial Proconsul of Morrowind, who is, at least on the paper, the most powerful man in Morrowind. So yeah, like I said, we are about to meet some major players. There is also a main temple, which I think contains the famous Muatra, Vivek's spear. But let's not get overly excited about that. And a big arena for more of that bloody entertainment. And there's also a super luxurious market, with only the richest traders, with some of them possibly matching the famous mud crab merchant in Manila game. So we can finally sell all of those expensive items. And finally, there's a home palace of Atires Hlalu himself, the Grandmaster and the oldest living member of House Hlalu. Here's an actual portrait of Grandmaster Hlalu, and I really hope they made a custom, overweight character just for him. 
Also, you guys may notice that many of these Dunmer have gemstones embedded on their foreheads. There's an actual story behind that, as Hlalu Dunmer were originally meant to have these gemstones that comes from Seydan Inn, a famous Hlalu ship that sunk somewhere near the current village of Seydan Inn many, many years ago. So these gemstones aren't just for decorative purposes. They have entire lore and significance behind them. But let's move on. Next we have Old Quarter and it's a home to much of the old nobility and is a rather small size district. And speaking of nobility, Narciss will be obviously full of them, but House Hlalu was historically ruled over by seven main families. And each family has its history and legends and there are even internal conflicts as expected. And finally we have the outskirts. Outside the city of Narciss are various manors, plantations, towers and homes to mystics, abandoned stronghold and most importantly Castle Narciss, home to the disgraced Imperial Duke, a scion of the Hlalo family. Castle Narciss is also a major legion quest center for the district. Tamriel Rebuild's Imperial Legion questline is one of my favorites, so I'm especially excited for it. So this was a short, most basic overview of Narciss based on teaser and available information. Honestly, I'm also trying not to read too much into it, as I want to explore and learn about lore in game. But just from the sheer amount of guilds, important people from both Hlalu and the Empire, the memorable epic locations, vast underground dungeons filled with unknown terrors, it really does feel larger in scope than Old Ebonheart. And I have to say, it blows my mind. But then again, we are talking about Narciss, Morrowind's financial capital, located at the end of the Cyrodiil's Purple Road. It's a place where hundreds of merchants and pilgrims go daily to test their fortune and pray to Vivek Sumatra. This is the heart of Hlalu, and in many ways it's this house that emulates the teachings of ancient prophet Velat, to learn, adapt and grow by constantly testing yourself through your enemy. And this includes the empire itself. Hlalu may be on friendly terms with the Septim Empire, but let's not forget that they are far from being honest allies. To the Hlalu it's all about seeking opportunities and using every mean possible to rise to the top of the food chain. And also, we can expect a lot of more adult-oriented content. House Hlalu has its fair share of dark side, something we saw only in traces in Suran. From red light districts to the black markets ran by criminal syndicates and used for big time smuggling. And even gambling. By the way, Narciss will also have its own version of a casino and even a guild of prostitutes. Like I said, there is a more mature content to be expected. With that said, Narciss isn't the only settlement. There will be smaller towns like Shipal Sharai and Hlerinhul, with their own local story arcs. However, I'm really looking forward to Ald Lual and Ald Marak, two surviving Redran camps from times when this entire region belonged to the House Redran. In fact, it looks like we will even have a chance to partake in this minor conflict, with the option to help the Radaran remain in their small, isolate fortress or assist House Hlalu in removing them. And we can also side the temple in order to help local citizens survive the conflict, which is kinda a third neutral position. Or finally, we can even help the local criminal Ja Nata syndicate to expand their criminal operations. I really love this, even if it's just a minor, isolate house war, because we finally have an option to make some bigger decisions and decide who is going to own the location. And I hope to see more of this in future. And by the way, speaking of Ja Nata Syndicate, this is going to be a very interesting place. I don't even want to spoil too much, but we will get to meet a slowed drug lord in a unique, large Velati tower. And slows are a race that we haven't had a chance of meeting in the base game. And this one is apparently exiled from the lands of House Dress. Again, Slodes are a really bizarre and obscure race, but lore friendly. And that should go without saying, as always, Tamriel Rebuild team based their entire work as much as possible on concept art, in-game lore books and developers comments throughout the years. But with that said, I have major Dune and Star Wars vibe from some of these images, which is not surprising as Dune, in particular, had a major influence on Morrowind. Shipal Shin is a red desert inhabited by strange alien creatures, ruins and nomadic tribes. 
And let's talk briefly about things that we're gonna find out there in the wilds. First of all, there's a new, really interesting Dunmer faction, Shinati clans. They are nomads, but differ from Ashlanders in many ways, originating from Red Khans in times before the rise of Tribunal. Shinati have a very long and very complex history with the Hlalu. They live in the outskirts of Hlalu territories, in the canyons and caves of Shipal Shin sometimes employed as caravan guards or even raiding caravans themselves. They are another throwback to that ancient Veloti culture and a primitive nomadic lifestyle accustomed to dust and windy environment. Now, Shinati society is closely tied to herding Sand Kvum, another unique, bizarre creature that we expect to see in Morrowind, and especially in this kind of environment. I don't know much about it, but it looks like Shinati use Sand Kvums for pretty much everything, from food to making bowls, armor, and clothing. I also believe that Kvums are basically crustaceans adopted to this unique environment. Shinati also herd another creature called Goat Hopper, or just a hopper. It reminds me somewhat of a Nyx hound, but it's basically a giant grasshopper mixed with, I guess, a goat? Now, apex predators of Shipal Shin are horned butchers, otherwise known as canyon whores. They are feared even by Shinati and are supposed to be high level enemies. In fact, it seems that entire Shipal Shin region is considered a highly dangerous zone, intended for a more advanced characters. In any case, horned butcher claws are supposedly capable of tearing through rocks, and their ingredients are highly valuable for alchemical purposes. So, good luck hunting. What also caught my attention are these enigmatic primitive paintings. They were left by Morrowind needs millennia ago, and they are primordial humans whose distant descendants may now be found on the archipelago of Katnoke in the Padomeic Ocean. They might be gone from Shipal Shin, but we may stumble upon few burial goods and cave paintings that remain of these people. I really love that they gave this region so much history and even prehistory. Which just means that roaming through the red deserts of southern Morrowind may be equally fun as exploring the majestic city of Narsis. There will be many points of interest, like abandoned fortress of the Raman Empire from the late First Era. I wonder what we're gonna find within. Also, a couple of modern-day imperial forts hidden among the canyons, a temple monastery celebrating the source of the Tyr River, a massive Veloti complex taken over by a criminal syndicate, and even an abandoned Barsabaic Aelid ruin from the First Era, near the Black Marsh. So yeah, we're even gonna have an Aelid ruin. And finally, I want to mention Skylamps as seen in this screenshot. They appeared in Morrowind's concept art as flying creatures with spear-like legs, and here we see them used as mounts by the Radaran. My guess is that they are used for fast travel between two Radaran forts that I previously mentioned. But we will see. All in all, this update got me very excited. There are no dates available, but I don't expect it this year. Previous expansion was in late 2023, so I'd expect Grasping Fortune in 2025, or at best, in very late 24. However, I believe that this year we will finally see the release of Anvil by Project Cyrodiil. And I haven't covered any content from them so far because they are about to redesign the island of Stirk as well, which was their only publicly available map. So once Anvil comes out together with Stirk, I'm going to do a deep dive review because old lore Cyrodiil is equally fascinating as Morrowind and Skyrim, so we can expect a ton of old-fashioned Elder Scrolls fun. In the end, I just want to say how witnessing all these epic fan releases 20 years after the Morrowind being published and 20 years of me playing the game, it really feels surreal. Morrowind seems like a game that will never truly be forgotten, and even though it's over two decades old, it still has a bright future. Most of the games these days, no matter how big and great, become forgotten in time. But Morrowind has that unique status of having a long past and equally long future, if that makes sense. It's a timeless piece of art that still grows and inspires generations of artists and creative minds behind these fan-based projects like Tamriel Rebuilt and Project Tamriel. I mean, what a time to be alive. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little overview. I generally don't do these kind of videos, but Narciss got me really hyped, as you can tell. I'm going back to making standard Morrowind content and hopefully I'll do a Tamriel Rebuilt playthrough on my second channel pretty soon. But with that said, thank you all for watching and I'll see you very soon.